50 years ago today, three astronauts took off from Cape Canaveral and started the four day journey to the moon. And make no mistake, it took a lot to get a man on the moon. Yeah, it took money, commitment, passion, and it took the man that you're about to meet. Marcelino Benito talks to NASA legend flight director Gene Kranz. He's a living American legend, immortalized in Hollywood film. I believe this is going to be our finest hour. This room here has been home. From inside Mission Control, former NASA flight director Gene Kranz helped land American men on the moon. 50 years after the historic Apollo 11 landing, Kranz is back in the room where humanity's greatest feat unfolded. When I walk into the room, I don't have to relive it. As soon as I walk into this room, this is this is seems crazy, but I hear things. Kranz was already a rising star at NASA when he heard President John F. Kennedy challenge the nation. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. It was a great time for America, and Kennedy's speech, I think, ignited the fire. Let's go do it. Next stop for them, the moon. Lift off. We have a liftoff. Kranz watched Apollo 11 blast off into space. Now you're accelerating, accelerating, accelerating down there. And you can almost feel it. I believe 100% that we're going to be successful. We're going to land that crew on the moon. You're looking good. Four days later, on July 20th. We are all arrived here uh, early dawn. Kranz and his team of controllers walked into mission control with a lunar landing within reach. Nobody can come in or out until we have either landed, we have crashed, or we have boarded. Those are the only three outcomes from now on. And it's now between me and my team and the crew on the spacecraft, they're the only people that exist in the universe. For the next few hours, the Apollo 11 astronauts faced daunting challenges. Mission Control worked each problem. It was a battle. We had problems with communication, we had problems with navigation computer program alarms, etc. Every solution got them closer to the surface of the moon. We're going to make this the first manned lunar landing. Four forward, drift into the right a little. First the eagle has landed. With just 47 seconds of fuel left in the tank. And we're getting a picture on the TV. Whew. Boy. <laughs> okay, we're going to be busy for a minute. But the people in the viewing room Recognize we landed and they're stapping and clawsing and they're stomping their feet. The world celebrated, but Kranz and his crew still had work to do. Okay, T1, stay no, stay, retro, stay, Fido, stay, guide, stay. We celebrated two hours after the landing. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. The surface appears to be very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Finally looked up and could see the moon up there. You could see the thing up there and say, hey, we just landed the moon. That's pretty cool. The success of Apollo 11 was way more than cool. It remains the defining moment in human history. People started believing in themselves and what they can do. Now at 85 years old, Cran still finds himself captivated by the moon and its mystery. This NASA giant believes the moon is still calling. To me, uh, uh, it's out there. And it basically says, I'm still here. Come and get me. What an inspiring interview. You've had the chance to meet him. A, a couple of times. Great guy. He inspires you, you know, all over again for, for the mission to space and, and, and beyond. I love this story. He likes to tell the story when he talks to people. Back then in 1969, the, the other engineers, they called him Grandpa. That was his <laughs> nickname. He was 35. Look at him now. He was I mean, 35. They called him Grandpa. That's how young everybody in that room was yeah. who put us onto the moon. That's amazing. And great to see yeah. him doing so well and talking with so much energy. I know. I love him. Incredible.